What's up, everybody? It's Marcus D'Angelo. We are back for another episode of the Hawks Nest. Of course, I'm joined by the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer. And Lance, I'm going to let you take it from here. We've got a very special guest. What's up, guys? It is the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer, and I want to welcome you to the third episode. And we thought we could make it a little more uh, saucy by bringing on my <laughs> monster sauce partner. That is Alex Zane. Yeah. Alex, what's up? welcome to the show, brother. I'm I'm doing great over here. Excited to be here in the uh, hawk's nest. Did, did you read that off the teleprompter? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. I have a teleprompter. We're, we're super high tech over here. I know, I know, I know. I've got, <laughs> I've got my, I've got, I've got a, like a whiteboard behind us right now. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, we sent Alex copy ahead of time, making sure he puts us yeah. over the right way. Yes. Yeah, of course. Um, but dude, it's so nice to have you here on the show. Uh, couldn't be more pumped to talk about you and your, you know, your relationship with Lance over the years, but. Um, really, Lance, uh, I, I can let you tee off, or I was going to ask where you started out in wrestling and, and all that, Alex. Go oh, ahead. man. Um, backyarding, actually, is where I started <laughs> off in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, because a lot of the um, last week in Pittsburgh, uh, a lot of the yarders got together. It's like a reunion. So, um, <laughs> Was it in a backyard? That's my question. Oddly enough, it wasn't, oh, uh, unfortunately. What was the yeah. point? Right, exactly, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. Um, probably for the best. We got a little rain roller up there. So, where are you from originally? Uh, originally from Lexington, Kentucky, and uh, started backyarding there when I was like, I don't know, eleven or twelve. When do you start backyarding? Something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Now, so, uh, infamously, uh, backyarding, of course, is very dangerous. What is the worst injury that you <laughs> suffered when you were doing that? <laughs> Most yes, of my always. injuries, yeah, most of my injuries came from uh, came from pro wrestling, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So you were safer in the backyard. I was definitely safer in the backyard, but not because that's some bullshit. I've seen some <laughs> <of those clips. laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. I've I seen wasn't... those clips. I wasn't safer. I was just maybe more resilient. No, 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 no. You were just building up, and then yeah, once yeah, you yeah. were doing it on a bigger stage, that's when you got hurt because you were already hurting. You just yeah, didn't yeah. know you were hurting. And that's then, what I said. In. That's okay, what I said yeah. in. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, but I did. I don't know how explicit are are we here in the Hawks? Go list? for it. Say whatever you're crazy. <laughs> I don't even know if I've ever told this story, like in a public forum. One oh, time, backyard. Are, we just, are, are we telling this one or no? No, no, no. Oh, that, okay. that wasn't backyard. Yeah. That was, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, so I, you might have heard this story, Lance. I'm maybe, not sure. Maybe. But um, backyard show, me and a me and a backyard friend of mine, B Cubed, was his backyard name. Um, we had, this was actually in Kentucky. I took a curb stomp outside of the ring. On the I was on the concrete, but I took it into the guardrail. My idea, of course, I was like, <laughs> oh, I'll take it to the guardrail. It'd be crazy. I'll get some color. It'd be cool. Right in front of literally no one because it's a backyard match. So it's just like me and the me and the boys, right? <laughs> so that day I used to wear like uh, Hayabusa inspired baggy pleather pants, right? And we all did. right, we all had to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I always wore compression shorts and whatever under them, but this day, this faithful day, I did not wear my compression shorts. So I was wearing like the baggy or boxers underneath. I know the story. So I, so I take the curb stomp. My member is just swinging free in there. And so it gets smashed between the concrete and my pelvis. Oh, no. And it smashes uh. so hard that it bursts out the side. So I, I, I broke my member. Little Zane, oh, no. tiny little are baby you, Zane. Are you saying sauce came out? <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, full meat came out, brother. Full meat. Oh. Full meat. Yeah, actually, when I got to the back, because I didn't know in the moment that it was like split and broke or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you you've, told, you've told this story, right? <laughs> yeah. oh. So oh. when I got when I got to the back, like it was laying there, split open with a bubble of meat hanging out. Oh, good lord! Um, my... What is the remedy yeah. for a <laughs> broken penis? Um. I don't, I don't know because I never went to the hospital for it. Oh, so that that thing is still all gnarly. Yeah, it, it, yeah. pull it out on the show. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's show the scar. He's got he's got a, he's got a self induced hook. Yeah, 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 fortunately it went back to back to straight, so we're okay, good on okay. that. I can't, I can't piss around. I can't piss around corners. Um, but, but there there was a scar and there was a lot of bruising. Whatever. I actually just oh. packed I just packed the meat back in. Oh. A little bubble of meat, packed it back in, put a little uh, butterfly 
band aid on there. <laughs> Let it and said, as, you know, as as you should when your backyard starts <laughs> your cock into the scene. <laughs> that is the ultimate like rub some dirt on it moment for a dude. I'm like yeah, I'm, was, fi- I'm fine. I'm I thought. Fine. I, See, Marcus, I thought he was gonna he was gonna tell his his eye story, which wasn't backyard, like you said. Right, right. Uh, uh, go ahead, tell tell that one pretty quick, please. Oh man, so this that one, nasty. me me and uh, Jimmy Lloyd, GCW, Los Angeles, my first pro death match. So <laughs> I did a couple death matches in the yard, but I did a pro one. Um, so get all the way through the match. I had like glass that went through my arm and stuff. There's clips on my Instagram of me pulling the glass out and all that stuff. But then the final bump of the entire match, I can't remember what's that. What's the move from a fucking from an electric chair flip bump? What is that called? I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, dumb. Yeah, dumb. I take that. I take that through like a pane of glass, like slanted in the corner. So I take that, but I I was like a little low on the glass, so I break like. The glass shatters everywhere, but then it like flies up. So I take the bump and then it just rains on me and my eyes open perfectly at the right time for glass to go into my eye. Um, Cut my eye, of course, (laughs) went to the hospital, all that. It took however long for surgery um, and like my pupil, my which is still a little misshapen, but my pupil was like leaking out of my eyeball, like. It was I've seen coming the pictures. Out. This is nuts, Marcus. It is. It is, it is gnarly. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's crazy. This is uh, when you were still backyarding. No, this was this was pro. This was GCW. Okay. In Los okay, GC, yeah, GCW. Um, I don't remember um, what date it was, but. I don't imagine that GCW has you on an insurance plan. Uh, <laughs> like, like I always, find this, <laughs> I always find this really fascinating uh, yeah. with wrestlers. Uh, I'm getting into wrestling. Lance is a wrestler, of course, and it's like. I, yeah, you hear so. about some you, you hear about some guys who are willing to take these crazy risks, and it sounds like you were one of those guys. Uh, like, what is it about that moment that you're like, "Hey, I don't care. I'm I'm doing this." Um, I don't know. Like, what gives us those ideas? I don't know. We just <laughs> so the finish. I guess the finish itself wasn't really my idea. Several of the other bumps were my ideas. Not that the finish was like out of out of the question or something like that like that was the finish was kind of like a tame bump as far as the match went i thought (laughs) so uh i don't know i don't like there's probably just the adrenaline and just the thrill of like oh that'd be crazy you don't you don't actually think i don't think when you're when you're gonna do these things i used to i think more so now i do but i used to never think about like oh that's me that i'm that's agreeing to do that like my body's going through it not this guy in my head that I'm seeing happen to. Like, I'm going to physically go through it. And you never realize that it's you until you're in the pain, like, moments later. And you're pulling glass out of your arm or having your eye repaired. Or, See, know, that's, the, that's, that's the one thing that I've never even messed with. I mean, I've done some Texas death matches and things like that. And obviously, forks to the head and a few crazy bumps, nothing to his to Alex's degree. But just the glass thing, like, I've just seen and heard so many stories and like I, I, there was a couple years ago, one of the guys, and I think it was at a GCW show, and it's no knock on GCW because it's just the guys choosing to do these crazy things, and it was the light tubes, uh, the yeah. light, the light tubes. I, I've always, I've just heard so many horror stories, and I don't know who the kid was. I think I mean, you might have been in the match. Was it the match where, where the guy stabbed himself like in his upper I arm was, and yeah. basically almost died? Like, yeah, he like, cut up, he cut some sort of artery, I believe, like in his uh, lap. Yeah. And, and he cut a ton of ligaments. I don't know where all he was cut, you know, because the yeah. blood was immense. Um, but I was in that match. I was laying outside of the ring. I had just taken some dumbass bump. Um, so, and then when it happened, and he he just like immediately rolled out of the ring. He was like, "Oh my!" Like freaking out, right? Yeah. And I see the amount of blood, and he just like went straight. He was, if I remember correctly, pretty much passing out on the way to the hospital, which was pretty close. But like, yeah. they threw him in a car took him to the hospital and stuff like that. I know he still has like some nerve damage and stuff in his hand, which is also terrible because he was a tattoo artist and stuff. And that's his art hand and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a risk, obviously I've, I've dialed back on the risk taking. I've dialed, I think I've, the crazy part about that story with that guy was the only reason I even heard about it, found out about it or knew about it <clears throat> was that he was at WrestleCon because this was all like during the Mania weekend stuff, if I remember correctly, because right. he was at WrestleCon the next day and like he was still white as a ghost. Like he, right. he's just lost most of his blood. He's just gotten out of a hospital. 
He right. basically was on his deathbed. Uh, his whole life has changed and altered because of a tube that went in his arm. And he's ha- he's hanging out at freaking uh, WrestleCon, you know, trying to sell some gimmicks, you know. It's just, <laughs> it's just insane. I was like, why? Who? What is the deal with this dude? And they're like, oh, man, he almost died last night. I'm like, yeah. he almost died? He's like, well, he does. He looks like death walking around right now. It yeah, was yeah. He almost died, for sure. He, for sure. They're like, if he, had, <laughs> if he was like five minutes later, he would have. So, so Marcus, you're here. You're hearing all this. You ready for your first first death match? You know, I I think the words uh, that doesn't work for me, brother. It might come out of my mouth really <laughs> often. <laughs> yeah. Especially, I'm learning from you guys now, where it's like, holy shit, okay, light tubes. That one's out. Yeah, you said there's a recent clip. I don't know how recent it, the the actual like thing happened, but I just recently saw the clip. Um, of so, a couple of luchadors. There's a light tube slanted in the corner. Have you seen this clip? No. I have not. He takes an Irish whip to the corner, light tube, oh, just God. a single light tube in the corner. It's one of the long, like skinny boys, right. they're like eight feet long, but they're like super thin, like right. not the normal long ones, whatever. And he takes it and he, so he hits this thing and then he takes the, like kind of the hard buckle bump mm-hmm. and the whole light tube literally goes through his arm like a sword. Oh, gnarly, no. gnarly. No crazy. No, yeah. I'll no. send you the clip. I'll send you no. the clip. no. <laughs> No, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not I, I know I know Halloween's coming up and I love the Saw movies, but I have no desire to see oh, that. Yeah. It's gnarly. <laughs> Actually, Blake Christian. Um uh-huh. yeah. he he every time we would be like hotel buddies or you know, like he's mm-hmm. rooming with me, whatever. Hotel buddies. Always, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um <laughs> no diddy. Uh but he would <laughs> he would take he would show me. Had have some <laughs> yeah, we had baby love for sure. <laughs> um he uh he would always show me clips of like skateboarders breaking legs and stuff. He'd be like, ah, ha, ha, whatever. And I'm like, stop showing me this shit before I wrestle. <laughs> like, I don't need this in my head. So then because he started getting a kick out of it, like always showing me this shit before I wrestle. Now I send him everything. Every time I see someone get haired online, I just send it to him. So yeah, that's the first person I sent the the arm light tube to. Oh that's- hell no. I was backstage at a GCW show with Blake Christian. He was there, and I went into the bathroom, and I walk in, and Blake Christian, he looked like the scene from Carrie. He's just covered in blood. And he's, like, <laughs> looking in the mirror. And I was like, uh, you cool, bro? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go pee, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling's uh, so weird, dude. Yeah, but, uh, right. Yay, that's great. <laughs> I'm not done. I, I'm not done talking about crazy risks yet, but we did get a super okay. chat. By the way, if you guys want to do uh, or rather want to get your question on this show, uh, you can guarantee it gets on if you do a super chat like Maddie, Mr. Marijuana has uh, done a two dollar super chat. Well, one of you guys wrestle Marty Janetti. Is this? Has anybody have you guys ever wrestled Mario Gennetti? <laughs> no. <laughs> it says will we in the future? Is that even an option these days? <laughs> I, I know. I, I feel like that's probably off the table, Maddie. Might be so, off the table. Uh, have yeah. you guys been around him? I know you've both been in the business for a while. I've never met him. Have you? Yeah, met him? I've, I've, I've met him a few times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I've nothing. Been, nothing extensive. Just a high right. estimate, John Lance, and he's all oh, Marty. Nice. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, no crazy rockers stories out of out of Lance. Then. <laughs> no, no, no. Probably, Thank goodness. That's a good thing. Um, I do want to talk about how you two uh first met, but before we do move off this like death match crazy shit, I do want to ask Lance: has, <laughs> has anybody ever come to you all excited about a match and said like, "Hey, I want to do this stuff," and you give them the old uh, "That doesn't work for me, brother." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I have, and I'm sure a lot of it's like. Guys, you know, it's more on the independent scene than anything. I think as you start to go up, people understand the, the difference uh, of sizes and they play that into what they want to do and what they don't want to do and whatnot. But then you do get some of those guys that just want to do their stuff, get their moves in. Uh, like like Brian Cage would say, GMSI, get my shit in. That's and, right. uh, you know, sometimes they'll want to do stuff and it doesn't make any sense. Um you know, I've had things in the past where guys want to do stuff and size wise, it just didn't make any sense. And I'm never one of those guys usually don't go, no, I'm not doing that unless they're just persistent on pushing for it. And they just won't listen to the different ideas or how to get to the same spot by doing different things. Um, most of the time I, I call it innocent manipulation. And then I just kind of go, that sounds awesome. Yeah. What if we do this to get there? Or what if we do this instead? Or, you know, and I always put it in a context of trying to make that person look the best they can in that moment to try to avoid doing what they wanted to do 
because it just made absolutely no sense. Or if what they wanted to do could be gotten to in a different way, I usually tried to find a different way to get to it. See, now that's the that feels like the right way to approach it. I feel like a lot of guys are just like, hey, that sounds terrible. I don't want to do that. So let's come up with something yeah. else. Sometimes it's important to do that so people stop having terrible ideas, I think. But yeah. I would be the last person to do it. Someone tells me a terrible <laughs> idea. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. I love it. Because you like disassociate it. somehow. You're like, character <laughs> Alex Zane is doing that. Yeah, character me, Alex. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throwing two tacos. He's in there, brother. <laughs> well, let's talk about how you two first met and cross paths. Uh, what what was that situation like? Warrior wrestling. Warrior wrestling in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. Um, what what was that? Uh, it was like one of the Russell Con ish type things. It's not Russell Con though. It was like Starcast maybe or something like that. Uh, it was, like it was one like, of Conrad's things. Yeah, yeah was, I mean we we were it was like ready. that weekend. Yeah, it was the Starcast one. It was actually the Starcast weekend for uh, uh, AEW's first pay per view. Actually, because that was right. they were doing the whole thing around the first pay per view and everything that was going on in Chicago. Um, yeah, we we met there. We were ta- tabled up and whatnot, and we ultimately had a match at Warrior Wrestling against each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was the first time. That was you were just fresh off of that G one, and yeah. so that was what twenty nineteen. Yeah, and then I was actually I was actually had just been offered by Shima with OWE Wrestling in Japan to come mm-hmm. over and do my first tour. And so I was picking his brain quite a bit on like, oh, like how, sh- how should I get along in Japan? And uh, are there any tacos? So <laughs> he let me know there was a Taco Bell. I said, everything's good. <laughs> you know? That, that yeah. could be a deal breaker. The cool part about this is that he, I let him know that there were Taco Bells in Japan. And then he went so far as to get a full like sponsorship where he had a meal named after him at the Japanese Taco Bells. Was it just the Tokyo one or was it was it it was nationwide? it was all of them nationwide nationwide <laughs> actually the, um yeah so that was for the last tag league that we did. Um yeah. and yeah that was that was crazy. That was a crazy little turn of events. Wouldn't have expected it, <laughs> you know what, what what was the what was the uh meal call? What uh we had there was there was one called Taco Driver and then I think the other one I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was basically just the upsize of the meal. So it was like, right. yeah, but it, one was called Taco Driver, which I thought was awesome because that's my finishing move. So, <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Is that yeah. one of your like, career accomplishments on your Absolutely. Wikipedia? It should be. <laughs> it should be. I don't know. I, I have to check my Wikipedia. Last time I got on there, it was talking, you know, it was, it was letting the world know that I was, um, I was uh, employee of the month at Taco Bell. <laughs> was I or wasn't I? <laughs> you should be permanent. Oh, only in Japan. Only in your big yeah, yeah, yeah. just like big. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I actually have one of the I don't have it on me or I'd show it, but I have uh like one of the menus like from the I guess it's from like the counters where you order or whatever. They have like the laminated menus with my yeah. face on it holding a taco or chocolate <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So I own <laughs> one of those. <laughs> Japan's an amazing place, man. So, Marcus, it, it, once you get going in this business full time, if and when you get a chance to go to Japan, highly, highly suggest it. Absolutely, I'm dying to, man. And uh, you know, it, it feels like a rite of passage to do the Ribera thing. Uh, Alex, yep. when you first go over there, are you heading straight to Ribera, or how did that look? So, when I went in 2019, I was trying to go to Ribera. I can't remember like the specifics, but basically timeline wise and schedule wise, it just never like lined up. So, I ended up not going to Ribera until i did super juniors in 2022 uh-huh. and uh, but probably probably a better time to go to rivera because got my jacket you know may, may have not gotten it as an independent in japan in uh, 2019 so I, i've got i've got a weird uh, uh animosity towards rivera because they used to have my picture up on the wall when you came in like the, the the back table that's up against the back wall if you looked up on the wall it used to be there and it was there for years and then for some reason they took it down i don't know why like who'd they, who'd they swap you out with I, I don't know i can't i i just know it's not there anymore and it's funny because it was like the picture from the very first time that i ever went to ribera which was like in 2007 oh, so. Um, and so you know it was up there for the longest time and then after i actually was doing some decent stuff in japan with new japan and whatnot that's when they decided to take it down so I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the hell so i'm like most of the time like uh you know we have, we've got a good friend over there his name is masa and he actually likes to be called fat ass masa um 
And um, Moss is great, and he takes care of the guys in really well, and he's always wanting to take us to Ribera. And most of the time, he's like, you want to go to Ribera? And I'm like, nah, I'm good. I like Danger Steak. Danger Steak's so much better. Danger Steak is awesome. Yeah. It's just these little tender uh, uh, fillets or whatever you want to call them, fillets. I don't know. And they're just awesome. They're tender. They're saucy. Oh, yeah. They're great. They're so much better. You know, it's not the experience that is Ribera. Ribera obviously is the experience because it's wall-to-wall pictures from – all eras of the business. When you show up, there's the giant pictures outside, you know, Cena and Goldberg and, and I think Andre maybe, and I think Beth is possibly still up there, um, you know, and stuff like that. So like the experience of going to Ribera is definitely worth it, especially at least one time. I mean, probably one of my coolest memories uh, going to Ribera was going with uh, Aki Bono. And this was 2009. And, uh, you know, he was sponsored by Ribera. So basically everything was free and oh, wow. we we went and he took us and it was like me and a couple of the other the the guys and boys that went and it was him and a friend of his and you know of course we eat the uh aki bono steak which is just enormously huge and he wants us to eat too and you know everybody's drinking a little bit of beer but he's ever he's wanting everybody to drink so much beer and like the whole experience was just really cool because he took us again and because of his relationship with Robert at the time um obviously before his passing because this was way back in 2009 um and then like he wanted to take us out to karaoke and he could sing like an angel it was nuts oh, it, wow. was, That's it awesome. was crazy crazy to hear him singing like he's this massive six foot eight six foot nine you know half japanese half uh hawaiian dude and he just just beautiful singing you know because we're just in one like the little private rooms too it's just him his friend me and this other guy named mike uh, and then there was another guy, I think his name was Mike as well. So there was just like five of us and we're just hanging out in this little karaoke spot, middle of Japan. And, you know, it's one of my first tours. So I don't know that much about Japan. I haven't worked with new Japan at that time yet. Um, and it was just really cool being able to go to Ribera with him specifically because of his relationship with the Ribera, uh, family. You know, one of the things that we always hear as fans is that uh, when you go to Japan, it's a ve- the culture is different and the way that they react to wrestling is very different. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. What can you guys tell us about that experience going from American fans to Japanese fans? I mean, for me, like it was just they have such a different respect level for the wrestlers as fighters. Um, you know, we're we're called fighters or we're called players. Um, you know, we're not called entertainers in Japan and just that different respect level. Like I always liken it to like, if you're in America, you're wrestling, you're wrestling in a beehive and it's either really small buzz. There's some noise and it's always going on or you're doing something good. And there's just this massively loud deafening buzz. Whereas in Japan, it's just a respect level to the point where you'll be in wrestling matches and they'll be just almost dead quiet. And it's not because they're not entertained. It's because they're really paying attention. And if you do something amazing, they really react to it in a majorly huge way. Um, and like breaking a hold, like if somebody's got you in a hold and you're able to escape to the ropes, it's actually seen as a, a, a strength because you fought your way to the ropes and you used the rules to your advantage to get out of that situation. So wow. it, it's just always been really cool to be around the Japanese fan base, to sit, to see and feel the differences and to be a part of Japanese wrestling, like before the pandemic and like right after when they weren't even allowed to cheer. So it, but still the respect level that was coming from them. If you could get them to go, Ooh, or ah, in the middle of that, you knew you were doing something cool. Yeah. I, I always thought it was like, when I first went over there, my first few matches and stuff like that, I was like, Oh, it feels so weird. You know, and like, am I doing, am I doing good at all? <laughs> you know, cause like in <laughs> right. America, they're just always making some sort of noise. Yeah. And, and if, and if they're not, you're not doing something right. Right. Like right. if they're just quiet, you are, you're shit in the bed, which I'm right. also very used to. So it was fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but when I was, when I was there, like after our first few matches and stuff like that, and I started to get used to it. And also like, because, because they reacted like really well, I guess, when you would want them to like it would help you really learn the timing and stuff of like how how and when you did things um so i really enjoyed that and i think it helped a lot with like just sort of uh perfecting more more so perfecting some of the craft for sure 
good opportunity to like hone your skills and Absolutely. and you know man if you can do it in front of a crowd that's not, like i'm again i'm just breaking into wrestling so the idea of the crowd just looking at you freaks me <laughs> out <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so god bless you guys i'm about to start asking about when you two started tag teaming before i do we got a couple super chats louise aloise is up first <laughs> Listening to a, I was just listening to my Will Smith CD. Louise must have gone back to 1998 in a, ta- in a time machine with the CD and overheard Big Bill say he could beat you in a murder hawk strap match. Are you just going to take that? I don't know how you would would respond to this. Go ahead, Lance. <laughs> I think he. I think this guy's specifically start trying to start some shit between Big Bill and I. He he just really <laughs> wants to see Big Bill and I have a match. He just <laughs> randomly will say stuff like he's like Big Bill was buttering his toast and he said he could butter your ass. To hear what you gonna take that? <laughs> you know, you're, gonna, you're gonna fight Big Bill now. <laughs> so you know maybe one day Big Bill and I will step across the ring from each other and and give a big old ass whooping to each other. Uh, but for right now. Who knows? <laughs> Lots uh, more, brother. We've also got Maddie Marijuana again. Maddie, the next Marty Janetti question is going to cost you twenty bucks, pal. He asked Marty Janetti on a pole match. <laughs> like, he called RVD. What? He called. Uh, my brother does a podcast, Dominic D'Angelo. He's actually in here right now. He does a podcast with RVD, and he called Rob's podcast live. He may have been under the influence of something. Rumor has it. I don't know that for sure, but uh, but yeah. So I guess Maddie is referencing that. Um, guys, awesome. how much money, the two of you, would it would it take uh, in order for you to do a Marty Janetti on a pole match? Forty dollar Taco Bell gift card. That's, that's mean, a good yeah. payoff, dude. Yeah, I want to. I want to gas a tank and a hot dog. Isn't that, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> gas a tank, a tank of gas. Sorry, gas a tank. If, of if, if like marijuana sure. books it, you know. Yeah, I'll be yeah. I just want to see him hanging from a pole. Are we hanging? No, <laughs> are we hanging with his, 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 his little Marty Janetti, or what are we doing going on? Are we doing it upside down like Dominic in the paper? Yeah, so, yes, please. <laughs> As to me. <laughs> Do we uh, just super, do we just super kick him a lot? <laughs> you guys just both team up on him like he's a yeah, like, and just beat him. He's not the prize, like he's just the pinata. <laughs> <laughs> we just leave and he's still hanging there. Nobody ever tries to get it. <laughs> we intentionally never finish the match. <laughs> right. <laughs> the rest of the show sure just goes know. on and he's just still hanging there. <laughs> Holy shit, somebody's gotta book this. Yeah. Um, boy, you never know what you never know where we're gonna go with the super chat, but uh I, I oh. did want to ask. Okay, you guys. Super, said, super was a is, is a very. I don't know about that word. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll call it mediocre chat. <laughs> so this, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys faced each other. Warrior wrestling in Pittsburgh, and right. how did you find yourselves now uh, moving forward in a in a tag team? That's why I started tagging with him because I didn't want any more of that. Asking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, just put him on my team. Then I yeah. would get my ass kicked. So I thought. Then he started yeah. using me as a weapon. I was about to say, yeah, you, you end up becoming the weapon in pretty much every one of the moves that I would do to you, but I'd use you as the weapon in the move to do to the guys that we were fighting. That's, so in other words, my strategy didn't work out really. Didn't work at all. It didn't work at all. Yeah, so we just... Sort of go ahead. So <laughs> yeah, we, we were, you know, I, I think the idea had been pitched around a little bit, uh, you know, in Japan, because yeah, he... <laughs> so when, when were you in the Super Juniors? 2022 and then i did 20. junior tag league was that also 20 yeah you did you did the junior tag league teaming with uh uh lindeman lindeman who's th- the smallest smallest thickest little dude ever <laughs> and like the dynamic of it. just the funny part is is even when alex isn't as jacked as he is right now he was still so much bigger than every single one of the juniors, whether it was the junior single, uh, the super juniors or the junior tag league, which he really stood out physically in the junior tag league. Because they booked me with Lindemann, which was, yeah, I love Lindemann. He's great. Yeah, he's awesome. He's he actually has been to my house and gone swimming in my pool, um, <laughs> which is an odd, weird thing because of our, our friendly sponsor friend, uh, Kato-san. Um, but anyway, yeah, and it was an idea that had been pitched around. And like I said, because he was so much bigger, he was already being viewed as a heavyweight more than he was a junior. It's just he does all the crazy, fun, cool moves that a lot of the juniors do. But on the physical side, he towered over pretty much everybody he stepped in the ring with. Um, so I think the idea was he was going to be moving up to the heavyweights. And like I said, I we talked about it actually privately. Um, and then randomly, um, I had to go to Japan in October of last year before the tag league that we were a part of. And I wrestled Will Ospreay. And it didn't work out for me necessarily. But I found out at that time 
that they were going to team him and I together. And like I said, we we talked about it. I think we joked about it. We may have even said the name Monster Sauce jokingly before it ever even existed and was pitched to anybody or anybody ever thought about it. And like uh, it was just brought up. And he was like, hey, you and Alex Zane, y'all are going to team together. And I remember telling Gato at the time, I was like, oh, cool, yeah. I was like, we we, we kind of like the name Monster Sauce. And he went, oh, I like that. You know, he really <laughs> popped for the name Monster Sauce just because, you know, he's the sauce and I'm the monster. So it was it, it kind of just worked out. And uh, fast forward into the tag league, we started super hot. Uh, we went 4-0. And, oh, and then uh, <laughs> we went 0-3. Oh uh, but we, yeah. had some really, we had some really good matches. Our, our last match with uh, uh, ELP and, and Hikuleo, uh, was probably one of the best that we had in the whole tournament. And it was just fun. Like he was saying, you know, he he would go for something and I'd grab him and choke slam him. But it was at the choke salt where I'd grab him the choke slam and give him into a moon salt. And then instead of giving the opponent the blackout, I would grab him up in the corner and I would walk him out in the blackout position and give him the blackout, but onto <laughs> the guy that we were beating. Stuff like it was, that. It was effective. It was effective. Yeah. What what did they what did they call that move? We didn't really yeah, because I think they asked for a name or something like that, and maybe we didn't give it to them in time or yeah. something, so they named it. Blackout know. Sauce, wasn't it? Blackout so Sauce, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was great. Um, yeah, then then I also really liked um, – What a, there was another match that I really liked that I was there. I liked several of them for different yeah. reasons. But And then and then one match, I uh, we it was one of the travel days. Where we oh, had to yeah. Like four, four hours <laughs> to the venue. And I, I got to the venue, and I'm like, unpack it. I'm going to yes. play for my match. Left my, left my pants. <laughs> he he did time. not have his gear oh, with him. No. <laughs> yeah, the card, the Cardinals plan of pro wrestling: never leave your gear. Yeah. And he left his gear, and it was like the tag league. Got to understand, Marcus. Like the tag league was, you know, I think there were like six tag league matches or something like that. It wasn't all well, no four, no seven, seven tag league matches, and then obviously you went on to the semifinals and finals, depending on your your record and whatever. Um, and but there's like eighteen shows on the tour. So only seven of them are actual like tag league matches. The other uh, uh, 11 of them are, for the most part, are just, you know, eight mans and 10 mans and things like that that are blow off matches. And so his opportunity to forget his gear 11 different times uh, was there. <laughs> and then the one night that we're actually in a actual tag league match where we're going to be featured and shown live on New Japan World and all the fun stuff, oh. he forgets it. And then uh, it was a fun, mad scramble to try to find stuff for him to wear. And yeah, so shout out to Red Shoes. Red Shoes let me borrow some of his red shorts. And I, so I came out in my entrance jacket. I didn't want yeah. to take it off, so he I didn't take it off. And uh, finally, finally, Lance convinced me to take it off and don the uh, red shorts and show them off a little bit. It, but... it, was, it was hilarious. We were, yes. we were we were wrestling the Lucha guys who who both have amazing gear because all the Lucha guys so have good. the best gear in the world, uh, you know, all the time, like 800 pairs of tights and boots and stuff like that. They look fantastic every time. And yeah, he, he comes out in shorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Staying true to my backyard days. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See, that's what you got to tell the, the announcers ahead of time. Like he's a backyard wrestler. He's doing yeah. that. Um, now what about the dynamic between the two of you? Like, uh, any fun stories while you're out on the road together? I mean, you're foreign land, two young guys, gotta be good times. Oh, it was definitely a good time. <laughs> Mainly, we just eat everything inside, especially like so all different. of our sponsors. I think, too, because like at that point, I had I was well into just being kind of the food guy, Itadakimas, on uh, mm -hmm. on Twitter, and um, just tell me what that everything. means. Uh, it's 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 what they say in Japan before they have a meal, and it essentially it, I think it literally translates to "I will enjoy having this." Right. But it's it's basically like kind of like thanks for this meal almost. It's yeah. like a it's like a blessing. It's like a blessing, yeah. So you say "itadakimasu" before you eat, um, which became what I would scream in the ring before I ate my opponent alive. But um, <laughs> yeah, so where I became kind of the food guy, then then it was like every time we went on a sponsor thing, they were like, "Oh." Eat more, eat more, which is already a problem Lance has just because he's big. So they're always like, oh, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> they'll so they'll just, feed you, man. That's the oh, great man, thing. I will feed you. Yeah. No shortage of food. And and no. we love, we both love the food in Japan. And, and Lance, oh, yeah. even, even in uh, 2019, when he was telling me to, when I was like asking him at, at our joint merch table, he was like, oh, you got to try the, the, what is it even called? I always forget the name of the, the raw the, horse. The raw horse, the Masashi. 
Basashi, Basashi. Yeah. 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 So he's like, oh, you got to try the Basashi and all this. And um, then I introduced you. you. Yeah. 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 You and you, you had told me to try that. And then in 2019, um, I hadn't tried it yet. Right. And Lance comes over to do Wrestle Kingdom. And so I was, it was in a sort of serendipitous way, was able to, on my first tour of Japan, meet up with Lance towards the end of the tour. And he, he took me out. Uh, we ate raw horse and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so the, the raw horse is so good. Highly recommend like it. it. Yeah, I love it. I, I eat it every tour multiple times now. Oh, man. All right. You know, so I got to try raw horse. For Kumamoto? You. Is that the city that was like? Yeah, I think Kumamoto is like famous. Like most cities in Japan kind of have their the thing, famous yeah. food. You know, this is their, this is what they're famous for. Like, um, I can't remember the the little uh, taki balls or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah. Uh, taki, yeah. Taki, taki, yeah. Taki, yeah. Taki, yes, I can't even say it. I can't remember. Taka, I didn't know this um, on one of my first tours. You know, I was like, I was doing the taco driver. That's my move, right? right? Boom, I right. did taco driver. And then I, and then someone tweeted, taco driver, why taco driver? And um, then I found out through that tweet or as like some several tweets that taco was how they say octopus in Japanese. Mm -hmm. oh. so then, okay. Yeah, and then so that's when I did like the the taco driver shirt that I already had done. I just replaced my arms and stuff with tentacles and gave myself tentacles <laughs> because I was like, yeah. Um, so eventually, I want to do some sort of um, octopus taco in Japan. Like, I want to do some sort of like food thing. That, that would that would be that would be over in Japan. Yeah, taco taco. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> See, I thought you were gonna come up with a new move called the octopus taco. No. Like, oh, whatever that is, I want, I want to see it. I'll show <laughs> little, you, brother. <laughs> little, little, little hint, little hint I action. Oh ahead. yeah. Who doesn't love that? Oh, oh, Marcus. Another... Go, ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I was gonna bring up the the because uh, we're talking about hentai, we're talking about octopuses and things like that. So one of the cool things, like when we first found out that we were gonna be a team. Uh, you know, both of us were very collaborative in, in what we were doing from like the shirt that I got made and things like that, which is kind of a, a combination of his mustache and my hair and whatnot. And um, it, it's it's a pretty cool design. Uh, but he decided he was like, he's like, hey, he's like, hey, man, I'm going to get it set up. Can you come to Orlando uh, and we're going to film all this stuff? And I was like, yeah, and I, I can't remember what I'd done. I'd literally just like got home like the day before or something like that and then flew to him in Orlando and they just moving into this new house. So like, it's completely empty. And I remember he picked me up and I was barely awake and we drive <laughs> over to his house. And like I said, there's nothing in the house right now because they haven't even moved into it yet. They've just gotten it. Um, uh, and his, his girl tab, she's in the back and she's like painting these, these cardboard boxes. And I'm like, what's going on here? And so he, he set up his ring in the backyard and, uh, you know, we had uh, had the film guy. What, what, I'm sorry, I can't forget. I'm, I uh, Roland is his name. Tussle Roland, Roland. Tussle oh, man. Yeah, yeah Tusselmania. I'm thinking Tusselmania, but I couldn't think Roland. He had Roland come over, had the ring set up, what she's painting or buildings. Uh, and then you went and bought like a whole like kaiju outfit, right? Yeah, yeah. So I got it online. There's actually like, a, I can't remember. It's like some Hollywood special effects. They make like Hollywood style costumes for like monsters and stuff. And like, from what I, from what I could tell on the site, like when you bought the costume, you bought the rights to the character and all right. sorts of stuff. So I bought one of those online and like had it like rush ordered and everything because we didn't have very long. I think it was like no, three we weeks or something everything. before we shipped out. Yeah. So we were like, let's get this done. So I, I brought um, a friend of mine, uh, Ty Hill, shout yep. out to Ty Hill. He he came over and put on the kaiju costume, and it's like this uh, almost this bug looking praying mantis armed <laughs> looking crazy looking thing. And then he has like a lab coat on and all this. And um, he he played the monster in my in my backyard. He was kaiju. dying. He was uh, dying the whole time. He was sweating his ass <laughs> off. And then hey, Taylor, the guy who made uh, Everybody Dies, also made this song for us, uh, Monster Sauce. So, like I said, I got this song made really fast, and it's awesome. Um, he 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 got everything set up. We filmed all this stuff. We're like giving moves onto the monster, on through the boxes. It like looks like old school, you know, Godzilla style uh, monster movie stuff. And like I said, Roland put it all together. Together and uh, it, it really came out cool. It came out. It, it was our entrance video while we were uh, teaming in Japan and whatnot. We put it online, I think, at some point. Um, so yeah. it's a really, it's a really cool little thing that just like 
like you said, all came together like really fast, and it, it was it was kind of a fun little experience, you know. Doing it was cool too. We got to we had the um, we had the I took the monster costume yeah. to Japan, and we had one of the young boys in Japan put it on for like our final <laughs> entrance. <laughs> so our last entrance in Tag League, he's just like running around. Going, ah. Shout out! Shout out to Oscar who shout who out was Oscar. who was our monster. Uh, Oscar's this like seven, not seven foot. I mean, he's like six foot eight, I think. He's pushing six foot, six foot eight, like German kid who's just awesome. Uh, he went through the whole young boy system in, in New Japan. Uh, and now he's over in, in Europe, I think specifically with like WXW in Germany. But he also does some stuff like Rep Pro and whatnot. Uh, the, the Young Bloods is his team, his tag team that he's got going on over there. And uh, yeah, he, he was our monster. He came out with us because like I said, we weren't in the finals or anything. So we had that, but he literally like did that, ran to the back, took it all off and then wrestled a match like two matches after us or something <laughs> like that. It was, it was nuts. Like so big shout out to Oscar for being a monster. Shout out to Oscar. Moment. <laughs> after getting blown up as the monster, he's got to go back out there again. Yeah. <laughs> and, he, and, and you couldn't see shit in that mask. Either. No. And it's, yeah. and it's, like, it's an entrance. So all the light, the house lights are down and it's just spotlight. So he's out there. Who knows? He's probably running into everything. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't pull the full shock master fall down. I think, mean, <laughs> The thing falls off. Everybody sees the Oscar. Yeah, we were like, don't even bother getting in the ring or something because oh yeah, it'll be a terrible thing if you try that. You know, right <laughs> now, uh, like the idea of being over there uh, and and touring and and going through all the stuff that you guys go through when you're when you're doing that, like it, it's really fascinating to me because it's like, hey, here's some free food. I imagine, oh, here's free drinks. Hey, we're off to a new city. Like all the temptation and all the stuff going on. It's like, and you guys are there for business. So it's like, hey, we still have to find a gym. Oh, I still have to kind of watch what I eat. Like, hey, tell us about that dynamic and keep it kind of keeping your shit together under those circumstances. Partly, I think some of that stuff kind of helps you keep some of your shit together as maybe tempting or distracting or whatever it is. It kind of like, because if I remember correctly, like you said, it was like 18 shows. And I think we were over there for 23 days. Yes. So, and, and I think three of the days are travel days. Yeah. One of the days a media day. Like, yeah. We had one day off, <laughs> one day off. Um, and I actually ended up doing something like a signing or something on that. You day. did. Yeah. And so like, so like getting to at least in the evenings or after shows or whatever, just kind of like leave it at the arena go eat some horse <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> for for those of those who drink like um have some drinks do whatever and like yeah so um i think it helps a lot but i can see i can see which i i mean we have seen how many people have you been around lance when you're on the bus the next morning and, and the japanese are very prompt and on time with everything and right. you're on the bus and someone's late and they're just getting later and stuff and it's definitely because that that night went a little long <laughs> the night before or something. but it does happen I, I think, you know, I mean, I've seen it happen so many different times and guys just go out and they'll get tore up from the floor up. I, you know, I mean, I, I'm not a big drinker, but I like to have a drink here and there. And there's been a couple times in the past. I remember wrestling for Pro Wrestling Noah and I went out with a friend who was a bartender in Osaka. And then she knew people that at every single place that we went and then people that would come to her bar and see her would see us and they'd want to buy us shots. And it was just, it was one of the, the worst decisions ever because the next day we had to wrestle and I just remember taking one bump and almost throwing up in the ring, rolling over and tagging out like Shelton Benjamin or somebody. And just, <laughs> I don't think I did anything else, but we saw so many different times. I like we were me and Alex and uh, Chase Owens were really on the Shinkansen uh, uh, train for lack of a better word, because we didn't want to do some of these insane bus rides. And there were a couple of them that were like 12 and 14 hours. Yeah. Uh, and I remember one that we had took and like even taking the trains, cause we had to like take a train to get to Tokyo and then take like a local and then take another to train. And it was still like a six hour day for us traveling. Um, but then we, you know, we got to wherever we were at and we'd been there forever. And the guys that were on the bus were on the bus for like 14 hours, but they decided they were just going to make it a drinking day and drank the entire time on the bus. And like, I remember like Clark Connors and those guys just coming off the bus. And it was one of those, like they came <laughs> off the bus and like beer cans fell off the bus. And like, they just literally for 14 hours, just partied in this bus. Like, it, like bless them for being young and dumb. Uh, <laughs> because 
they were just like, screw it. We're going to be on this damn thing for 14 hours. They loaded up on uh, hard liquors and beers and Eyeballs. wines and stuff. <laughs> yes, they just – and drank the entire time, like literally stumbled off. Because I, I remember seeing them come off the bus because somebody was like, oh – somebody messaged me and said, oh, your bags are going to be here because we didn't travel with our big bags. We left them on the bus. And then when the bus arrived, we just go get them at the hotel lobby. And so one of the people on the bus had messaged me like, hey, we're pulling in. So I went down there, and I just remember literally seeing them like stumbling off the bus and beer cans falling onto the ground and them trying to pick the beer cans up and falling on the ground and <laughs> laughing the whole time because they just had been drunk this whole time. Um, and I also remember this was years and years ago. We had to take a ferry because this is a thing that normally like during the G1 or whatever, they would take a ferry up to the to Sapporo. And most of the time they would travel and they would work the tour. So they would get to a certain spot and the ferry was only like four or five hours. But for whatever reason, this year that I was on the tour where we got on the ferry, it was like a nine hour ferry. And like, I remember I went and just laid on the floor and put these little pillows all around me. And I tried to pass out as much as I could, but some of the guys went into the little common area and just were started pounding them. And to the point where uh, uh, Tonga. Uh, he was, and he used to have like this crazy big hair. Like it just was out there. And he, I guess he drank so much. That, like he was stumbling around the, the, the cruise ship or whatever we want to call it. Like just everybody else had passed out and he's just like with his hair all out. Of it. He was the true monster. <laughs> so, and, and he still made it, man. Like he made it through, like, luckily it was just a travel day. And then, you know, you get to the hotel and you just pass out. And the next day, yeah, sometimes just, it's impressive when the boys have a show the next day and you'll see them just get smashed, yeah. you know, yeah. they'll go out to a sponsor dinner the night before and you see, and you're like, you're up, you're at the dinner with them and you're like, how are you going to make it? And they're there the next day, you know, no problems. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Um, and uh, and a lot of times I'm like, I don't drink. And so a lot of times at the sponsors and stuff like that, I'll see some of the young boys, especially the young boys get the worst of it. Oh it's just like drink more, drink when they're not going to say no, you know? Yeah. And so they just get them crazy hammered. They're passed out before we're leaving dinner. They're just like, I've, I've seen the them. I've seen young boys in a hostess club in their underwear dancing to AKB 48 AKB. <laughs> AKB48 is like a girl group in Japan. It literally has 48 girls in the group and they do like pop type, type stuff. And they were literally in these two young boys were in their underwear on the, the benches where everybody's just sitting in like a semicircle <laughs> and by the sponsors, you know, making them drink and throwing stuff at them. And they're in their underwear just singing AKB48 songs. It was insane. pretty freaking insane. It was awesome, man. I love it. Man, nuts. Now, are you seeing any, any guys like because again, it's it would be so hard to avoid that temptation. I know for mm -hmm. me personally, like it's over there, you're around a bunch of crazy dudes. It's like, yeah, I'll have a beer. And the next thing you know, you're shit faced. Right. Uh like have you seen any guys like throw up in the ring or be unable to perform the next day? Or what does that look like? No, like I said, that like that like he said, it's pretty impressive. You'll see these guys do this and still the next day will because a lot of the guys you're talking about going to the gyms and stuff like that sometimes we have these travel days and you don't really have a chance to go to a gym it's literally like show up at your hotel maybe with 15 minutes then you're back on the bus to go over to the arena and so a lot of the guys and you know you're only we're only going to the arena like two or three hours before the show starts too we're not going six or seven hours like normal tv days for you know aw wwe things like that um and they will work out so they've gone out the night before they've done this crazy travel day and then they'll go and do like a full workout just with the, the weights or whatever, or run around the building or the bands that they bring or stuff like that. And then wrestle the same night as well. So it's, it's pretty impressive to see that stuff when, when the guys can rein it in to still get out there and perform and still get a workout in and do all that stuff. Some Harley race shit right there. Right. Right. So be crazy and then wrestle. <laughs> full <laughs> right. Um, so uh, we are going to wrap it up here pretty soon. I feel like we just scratched the surface. We've got to have you on again sometime, Alex. As Gladly, well. absolutely. Bef um, before we go, though, before we go, I do have five questions I want to ask Alex. All oh, right. What the oh, I got some fun. <laughs> I've, I've got some fun ones, and then it's going to end with a semi-serious one, and you, I'll tell you how to answer or how you can choose to answer it if you want. Okay. So the first question I have: What is your favorite snack? My favorite snack, like. Just anything. In Japan? Anything. Anywhere, anywhere. Favorite snack. What is Alex saying? The sauce. What is his favorite snack? Oh, man. Uh, I, I snack a lot. I am a I am a snacker, for sure. Right. Oh, All man. Right. Uh, 
that doesn't tell us what your favorite snack is, brother. Right. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to because I snack so much. It's very hard right. to narrow it down. Like, what, what's your favorite right now? Then, what's your favorite right now? What's your go to? Or right are now, you like a good. sweet or a salty guy? Yeah. Usually, usually sweets. I got a okay. sweet tooth. I'm. Okay. Yeah. Like in Japan, like I'm always going. Like every day, I'm going to get. They have like this whole pastry section and all the Lawsons and all the Seven Elevens. I'm always going in there, and they have like these. There's like a three pack of like these twisted swirly like cinnamon donuts okay and i always get those i start every day with like three donuts over there it's <laughs> Help Help yeah, yeah, yeah. Help yeah. it's probably better for you over there that's what I tell myself. <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> yeah all right. right question number two for the sauce alex zane what is your most enjoyable dirty habit same same answer no, 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 it can't be that. Can't no, be no, the same. <laughs> that is not the same. Dirty habit. Oh, yeah, dirty habit. Like give, oh. give us, some, give us some juicy sauce here. Oh Lord. Yeah. Abby would not appreciate if I put that on. There. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you absolutely have to. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely definitely food related though. Like that's okay. That's okay. the hardest. That's the hardest thing for me. It's because, I, like, I want abs just as bad as anyone, right? And like, I do okay. Have abs. I do okay. Not, nothing compared to what I would want. And yeah, I'm terrible with any form of dieting. Any form. All, right. all right, that was that was a pretty tame answer. But okay, I'll accept, <laughs> it. I'll accept it this time. All right. Okay. All right. Question number three for the sauce, Alex Day. What is your dream pet? My dream pet. Like, oh. like, just like this. He could be. Complete fantasy pet. It can be anything like that. I don't care. I actually really like those. Um, I like those one dogs that they're, they're. I don't even remember what they're called. They're hairless dogs, though, and they're like okay. they're like a, a hairless, hairless dog. black dog. Yeah, they're a hairless dog. I don't know. They're crazy looking. They they I've remind me of that. like the um, the like Anubis statue or whatever. They're just okay. badass. I also really like the Irish Wolfhounds just because I've always wanted one, so I can name him okay. Splinter. So I can name him Splinter. Master There's Splinter. Your- I've got That's a really quick, cool. so as far as an Irish uh, wolfhound goes, so this was years ago and I was doing security and I was doing an Irish festival and everybody had Irish wolfhounds walking around this Irish festival. It was really That's cool awesome. to see. That's badass. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. don't see them very often, especially over here. No. And like I said, because this was specifically an Irish festival, all these people had Irish wolfhounds walking around with them. That's awesome. It was really cool. All right. Question number four. Uh, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh man, uh, some sort of invincibility or like like super healing strength, like kind of okay. like uh, Wolverine has. Because then, because then I could do all this dumb shit. <laughs> no, no problem, yeah, dude. dude. No, no yeah. ruptured penis would hold you down. Then no, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'd be like right. Darby Allen, dude. I'd just get up and walk away from everything. <laughs> One day he probably will not. What a legend! I mean, he's crazy. He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, all right, so this last question, is, it's going to be a pretty serious question. You can answer it yes, no, or, or no comment. It's your choice, or you can go into depth with it if you want. No. Alex Zane, do you believe in God? Yes, absolutely. I don't, I don't know that I believe in God in, an, in, a, in a particular religious sort of way. Like okay. if I lean toward Christianity or this or that, like I don't, I don't know. Not well okay. versed enough to, to have no. made that decision. But I... I it's it's to it's to everything is way too sis, like systematic and like perfectly aligned for it to be some form of like happenstance coincidence whatever if you believe in science then okay we believe in the same thing i just call it a god i guess i don't like something is doing something and they're killing it. Shout out to them. <laughs> cool. right. That's awesome, man. That's, like I said, those are those are my five questions. They're a little bit all over the place. It was just they something are, I, they so I appreciate you answering them all, brother. They were Always. great questions, and you're you're making me think I need to start asking you some random stuff every once in a while. Man. It's really <laughs> yeah. that I'll idea. have to think of five questions for Lance for the next time we're on. I love that idea. <laughs> now, uh, Alex, you're not fully off the hook yet because I did want to ask you, what else do you have going on right now, and where can people find you? Uh, I'm a little bit of everywhere. Um, where am I not? I'm everywhere. I'm, you know, from <laughs> YouTube's to TikToks to Twitter. Um, as far as things going on right now, some things I can't talk about. I'm doing. Oh, I, I, I'm doing the um, uh, maple reef. Maple leaf. What is reef? Maple leaf wrestling in Canada on October nineteenth and twentieth. 
Scott 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 Morris show, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Scott I was excited Scott to see. Him. Yeah, when he reached out about that, that was that was cool. Um, so I'm doing that. Yeah, um, but I'm actually. What's it, what day is it? So Friday night. It's Sunday, right? <laughs> Friday, Friday, Friday night was my first match back since my little injury in Japan that I thought was going to be a much longer recovery. Thank, thank oh, God. I didn't, know I, I didn't know about that, man. Yes, I so create. I did a backflip off of like there's like a stage in Cork and did a mm -hmm. backflip. I was wrestling Mal uh, from DDT, just mm -hmm. GCW show at Cork, and, and uh, did a backflip and I landed on both of my heels which mm -hmm. I've done a million times where like, mm -hmm. oh, that hurts and I'm just going to limp and we'll just pretend it didn't happen for the next uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> then I'll okay. go walking like an asshole. Um, but when I landed on both my heels, I severely bruised the bone in both of my heels, pulled a Ooh. bunch of ligaments in both my feet. And I found Ooh. out when I got home that they were unable to, to diagnose this. When I went to the emergency room, they gave me x-rays and everything. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the uh, healthcare system over there because I was – from the time I was injured to the time I was released from the hospital was like an hour and a half x-rayed <laughs> and everything. It was insane. Whoa. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so uh, I, when I came back over here and got checked out and stuff, I found out that I collapsed both of my arches. Oh, damn. Yeah. Which sounds way more severe than right. it was, but they were kind right. of like, well, it's going to heal, but it's going to heal based on like the position you put it in. Right. So they were like, here's some, souls in souls and stuff so yeah right. so had my last or my first match back um on friday everything went well feet are doing well of course they're still sore i don't know a lot uh, when's the last time you weren't sore lance I i'm sore right now right <laughs> it's been since 08 i've been sore yeah. <laughs> like, you know so I, so like that just comes with it you'll get used to it too marcus like you yeah. you'll learn like once you start it's when like I notice when I slow down, maybe you notice this too, Lance, if you've ever taken like extensive time off, that's when it starts to set in. It's like yeah. when I stop like beating myself up every day, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You, you lose that callousness that you yeah. get. It's like, it's like if you go to the gym all the time, you don't feel as sore. But if you take some time, like take a week or take two weeks off from the gym and then you go back, it's like the same exercise you were doing before hurt you like they've never hurt you before in life so yeah, yeah it's same perfect person. analogy for sure because that's yeah. exactly what it's like might have to start incorporating some of those ddp yoga ice plunges and shit mm -hmm. like that you guys ever tried ddp yoga i feel like it could help wrestlers i have i did i did ddpy i know he he's rejected the yoga phrase now he's moved on branding wise yes. but i've done ddpy in a parking lot in the like at 11 o'clock at night led by ace austin in some i don't even know what city in japan in just a parking lot in japan and it was like seven of us just just deep stretching brother it was great <laughs> it was, i mean yeah ddpy is crazy because like i will i will say like if you've never done it if you do one session of it you immediately kind of like any yoga program but like you immediately like feel like oh oh shit <laughs> I, 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 I definitely need to get into it then me too me too like i i've, I've been wanting to like make a steady regimen of it but yeah you would you would benefit greatly from it if you have any like aches and pains and stuff because it's crazy and i talk about like ace austin is huge into it and he's yeah. very he's very limber i'm very not everyone thinks oh you flip you must be i remember wrestling um zach saber and and i was like I know you're a submission guy. I'm the least flexible fucker you're ever going to put in a submission. <laughs> so just go ahead and know that before you try to like put me in. Everything you do to me is going to be a shoot. I'm so. not resisting. <laughs> like, I just I don't bend. Like, like, I don't so. go that way. <laughs> yeah, but he still he still managed to fold me up like a pretzel. So <laughs> <laughs> he's good at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we definitely have to have you back on. Uh, Lance, I'm not letting you off the hook just yet. We do have one more super right. chat from uh, Louise Louise. Have you made any waves to get back on Dynamite? Uh, Lance, you just recently were approached by Don Callis on TV. What can you tell yeah. our folks about that? I can't tell you anything because I don't know anything. I was just having fun beating up people backstage like I normally do. And, you know, some people like that. Some people don't. I enjoy it every single damn time I do it. Um, and then for whatever reason, Don decided to step up and he asked me if uh, Jake and I were still involved, which we are. Um, so I don't know what he's thinking, where he's going with this or what he wants from me. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll find out, you know, Dynamite's on Tuesday this week. Tune in Tuesday and maybe we'll figure that out together. 
Look at that poor guy you got snatched up there. I no, feel terrible no, no, for no, this no. guy. No, poor is that guy. Sam? Is that he Sam? Was, that is Sam. I whooped Sam. Sam's ass. No. <laughs> Sam. His, 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 damn, his, his, cur, his curly mullet. I, I couldn't stand it. I had to throw him into the bus. He's just there trying to make an impression, and here you are throwing him He did. He made bus. an impression in the side of the truck that I threw him. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Don liked it, evidently, it's fine. Oh, he loved it. So I don't know Sam, but he probably had it coming. He did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, real, well, real asshole that Sam. Just be you saw his hair, yeah. <laughs> his well, uh, dude, Alex, I cannot thank you enough for coming on <laughs> here. Uh, let's definitely stay in contact. I want to bring you back on. Um, you had mentioned you've got YouTube channels and social and mm-hmm. TikTok. If you want to put out any of those handles right now, we've got 100 people, 100 some odd people listening to us. Fire away. Search, search me up, Alex Zane, Alex Zane Sauce on Instagram and Twitter. Alex Zane everywhere else. I lost my handles on Instagram and Twitter. I won't bury anyone. It wasn't my fault. How dare them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, they know who they are. Yeah, you know who you are. They're not worried about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Alex, just search Alex Zane. If you can't find me, then I'm doing a poor job at being found. Love you very much. Thank you. <laughs> 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 well dude thank you so much uh lance why don't you go ahead and uh wrap us up with your with your pal there all right guys girls we appreciate you coming on i hope you had a saucy damn good time alex zane i appreciate you joining us here on the third episode of the hawk's nest uh we will be back with more maybe in a couple weeks who knows marcus and i and who knows will show up with us next time but we appreciate you every single damn time you join us on the hawk's nest Catch you oh! guys later. You need like a hop call, dude. Oh no. Yeah, that's what you <laughs> Marcus, cut him off. I'm gonna grab that's that smart. sound clip and end every episode off. with can it. You, from can, you get it <laughs> can you get him out of the chat? <laughs> See you guys. Later, boys.